you know, we've all been there. We've all been in that spot where you're just so angry at your kids. You're just coming unhinged. I'll give you an example. Um, you're getting re them ready to go to school, or if they're not in school, you're trying to get two kids or three kids or even one kid dressed, and you're running out of time, and you need to be somewhere at a certain time, and you know it's going to take 20 minutes to get there, and it's, you're at the 20-minute mark, and you're still trying to get their shirt on them. They're jumping on the bed. It's just, it's just stuff's gone sideways, right? And instead of being calm, you start escalating. And maybe you're just like holding your kid with one arm while trying to get their underwear on. You start raising your voice. Two of the kids are fighting or talking or laughing or whatever. And you as the parent are just escalating and escalating and escalating. You're getting more and more angry. You're starting to raise your voice. You're starting to not be nice to your kids. And it's not the person <clears throat> You want to be, you don't want to be that person. You know, you've had talks with yourself in the past. Hey, I'm never going to talk to my kid like this. Or you did it once. You told your kid to shut up once and you're like, I'm never going to tell them that again. And then all of a sudden, you know, three months have gone by and you're like, will you shut up? You've reached your point where you are, um, you know, some of you might be saying, oh, but my kid deserved it. Or someone's saying, oh, kids need that sometimes. But in reality, I think that when you lose control in front of your kids, you're teaching your kids that when shit hits the fan, it's okay to lose control. And it's not, losing control is not cool. It, it's not cool and it's not um, effective. And um, when you do it in front of your kids, you, you're not getting what you want. You're teaching them that in difficult times, lose control, don't keep it together. So parent A is having this struggle. Parent B hears it from the other room and doesn't like the way their kid is being treated. And so they come in and they escalate the situation. Maybe they're critical of their mate, the way their mate's handling the kid. Um, maybe they come in and antagonize the situation. But basically, you don't like the way p parent B doesn't like the way parent A is treating the child. And so they come into the room. How you come into the room is really, really, really important. What you say and what you do. What you're trying to do is you're trying to, or the mindset that I suggest you come into the room with that's the most effective is you want to show the parent that you support them and you're not being critical of them and that you understand that they don't want to be behaving that way. So you have to say it in a way, not like you come in the room and you're like, really, you think this is effective? Talking to him like this? Here, let me do it. You know, you're, you're not there to one up the other parent. The way you need to come in there is you need to come in there compassionate and empathize with the parent. Don't even worry about the kid. And let the parent take space and you take over in a way that's not insulting to parent A. So parent B has to come into the room and be like, oh, um, parent A, um, it could even be this this just um, uh, direct. Parent, parent A, could I talk to you just for one second? And they come out of the room and you're like, hey man, let me do this. This, is, I mean, like clearly um, Sally or Joseph is driving you nuts. Can I just take over? And, and, and you just take space. You have to do it in a way, that is not the time to be critical of parent A's parenting. That is the time to alleviate stress for your mate, for the mother or father that's in that intense sort of altercation power struggle with the child. So, And then later on, you could address it. You could be like, hey, parent A, anytime you need my help, just let me know. I've been there. I've done that. But the goal is to come out of every situation stronger, feeling more like a team. And when you support, when you support parent A, who's in this power struggle with the child, the, the child also sees that also. They see that as the example. They see you as a team. I can give, I want to, I want to give you another example of like of, of you, it doesn't even have to be um, it doesn't even have to be asking them to leave the room. You could come in, put your arm around parent A, give them a kiss, and be like, "What can I do to help?" 
And then parent A may be like, Joseph won't even let get his underwear on. He's not listening to me. And I'm like, okay, I got this. And then just sort of redirect the situation and sort of help crack a joke, be lighthearted. Do not escalate the situation. Do not make it about you. Parent B should not make it about them being angry with the way parent A is treating, talking, or acting with the child. You're there as a teen, you're there to empathize, and you're there to de-escalate and give parent A a chance to get away and regroup. And it's important. It's the kind of thing that um, can do irreparable damage to a relationship if there is a misalignment of the way the parents are treating the kids. If you feel like one of if you feel like your mate is mistreating your kids, one really it's they just need space. The resentment will build. And I'm not talking about you go in there and parent A's beating the kids. I mean then 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 I mean then you need to go in and intervene. Ideally you still need to do it calmly and in control and, and then there needs to be some issues addressed. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm just talking about the day-to-day things that happen around the dinner table, around trying to get the kids together and get them out of the house. Um, if you're ready before your mate um, and you're just sitting there on the couch scrolling through Instagram, go help alleviate the situation. Don't be critical of the parent who's struggling. Empathize with them, make it lighthearted. And also, don't go in there thinking, being like, okay, I got this, you go, you go, you're obviously too angry. That's, that's, that's escalating the situation. That's not, that's not helping the totality of the situation. That's, that, really, that's you being on your high horse. And, um, and, and, and that's a, um, there's no end to that. There's no peace there. There's no, you're, you're not going to get to the next step in a relationship or in raising kids by doing that.